The Lysamphibia are a group of tetrapods that includes all modern amphibians. Lysamphibians consist of three living groups, the Saelientia, the Chordata, and the Gymnophana. A fourth group, the Alicordata, was moderately successful, spanning 160 million years from the Middle Jurassic to the Early Pliocene, but became extinct 2.5 million years ago. For several decades, this name has been used for a group that includes all living amphibians, but excludes all the main groups of Paleozoic tetrapods, such as Temnospondyli, Lepospondyli, Imbolomeri, and Seymouriamorpha. Some scientists have concluded that all of the primary groups of modern amphibians, the frogs, salamanders, Sicilians are closely related, but others hold that frogs and salamanders evolved from temnospondyls, while Sicilians evolved from lepospondyls. So this amphibia is polyphyletic with respect to other tetrapods. Some writers have argued that the early Permian Dosaurophoi Gerobatricus hotoni is a Lysamphibian. If it is not, the earliest known Lysamphibians are Triadarbatricus and Zarcobatricus from the early Triassic characteristics. Some, if not all, Lysamphibians share the following characteristics. Some of these apply to the soft body parts, hence do not appear in fossils. However, the skeletal characteristics also appear in several types of Paleozoic amphibians, double paired occipital condyles, two types of skin glands, fat bodies associated with gonads, double-channeled sensory papillae in the inner ear, Green rods, ribs do not encircle body, ability to elevate the eyes, forced pump respiratory mechanism, cylindrical centra, pedicellate teeth, bicuspid teeth, opiculum in most anurans, loss of posterior skull bones, small, widely separated pterygoid bones, wide cultrifum process of the parasphenoid and lysorophia relationships and definition. The features uniting the Lysamphibia were first noted by Ernst Haeckel, even though in Haeckel's work, Lysamphibia excluded the Sicilians. Nevertheless, Haeckel considered the Sicilians to be closely related to what he called Lysamphibia. In the early to mid-20th century, a biophyletic origin of amphibians was favored. In the late 20th century, a flood of new fossil evidence mapped out in some detail the nature of the transition between the elpistostegvalid fish and the early amphibians. Most paleontologists no longer accept the view that amphibians have arisen twice, from two related but separate groups of fish, with the single origin of amphibians being accepted by most herpetologists and paleontologists. It was assumed that Lysamphibia was monophyletic as well. However, the origin and relationships of the various Lysamphibian groups both with each other and among other early tetrapods remains controversial. Not all paleontologists today are convinced that Lysamphibia is indeed a natural group, as there are important characteristics shared with some non-Lysamphibian Paleozoic amphibians. Currently, the three prevailing theories of Lysamphibian origin are monophyletic with Within the Temnospondyli, monophyletic within Lepospondyli, diphyletic with apodins within the Lepospondyls and salamanders and frogs within the Temnospondyli. Dot. One of the hypotheses regarding their ancestors is that they evolved by pedomorphosis and miniaturization from early tetrapods. Recent molecular studies of extant amphibians based on multiple locus data favor one of the other of the monophyletic alternatives and indicate a late carboniferous date for the divergence of the lineage leading to Sicilians from the one leading to frogs and salamanders, and an early per date for the separation of the frog and salamander groups. Bibliography. Benton, M.J., Vertebrate Paleontology, 3rd ed. Blackwell, Carroll, R.L., Vertebrate Paleontology and Evolution, W.H. Freeman and Amp Co.
San Moro, Diego, Miguel Vences, Marina Alcobendas, Rafael Sadoya, Axol Maya. Initial diversification of living amphibians predated the breakup of Pangaea. American Naturalist 165, 590 to 599. DOI 10.1086-429523. PMID 15795855.